And yet these Bibles, each and every one of them, they tell us that Jesus, when he went to Jerusalem, he rode the donkey into Jerusalem, Matthew says. Mark says he rode the donkey into Jerusalem. Luke says he rode the donkey into Jerusalem. John says he rode the donkey into Jerusalem. Look, God Almighty didn't miss that out. His son riding the donkey into Jerusalem. When every Tom, Dick and Harry was riding donkeys into Jerusalem. That he didn't forget. But the ascension is not mentioned not once. And where it is mentioned is now thrown out. But I buy another Bible, identical Bible. That's to the look. Printed by the same printers. I look and it's there again. What was thrown out, they put it back again. How come? How come? What games are you people playing? Look at this. Back again. This is the 1971 version. Back again. The ordinary people, poor people, they don't know what's going on. What game is being played? Who knows? You read the preface. The learned man, the preacher, he reads the preface, but he won't tell his congregation what he's reading in the preface. In the preface we are told that individuals and two church denominations, they stampeded them, they forced them that they should put it back. If not, they're going to preach against this book to say, look, don't buy this, buy the King James Version. Don't buy this, buy the King James. The most up-to-date Bible going to the most ancient manuscripts. No, 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 don't touch that. This is the safer one because it has everything that you want to preach to catch the fish. It's easier to catch the fish with this than with this, the bait. You know, the fish, you know, uses, like Dale Carnegie, he tells us in his book, how to, uh, he says, how to win friends and inf influence people. He says, I like strawberry and cream. I think most Americans do. But he says, when I go fishing, I put a worm, worm to catch the fish. It's not that I love worms, but this is what the fish loves. So I put worm. So now, if you want to catch fish, you've got to use the right bait. Ascension is now restored to the text, says the preface. Why not God told them so? God doesn't speak freely to those scholars, as freely as he happens to speak, as brother claims, with him. And I want to start this out tonight by quoting a passage of scripture that Mr. Dedot and myself disagree somewhat over, but which is one of, if not the dearest, passage in the Word of God to the world of Christendom, found in St. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only unique son. Fooled you there, Mr. Dedot. His only unique Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And I want to use that as the basis for this simple statement that I would attempt to make tonight. Now, prepare for the shock. I said, prepare for the shock. From these 32 scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 cooperating denominations, they say, yet the King James Version has grave defects. And that these defects are so many and so serious. They are, these are not my words. They are so, they are so many and so serious as to call for revision in the English translation. Calls for revision. And they revised it. And in the revision, the kingpin of the evangelist, the preacher, the hot gospeler, the Bible thumper, John 3.16. No Christian preacher is worth the name if he can't clinch the deal with John 3.16. John 3.16. For God so loved the world, in the authorized King James Version, that he gave his only begotten son, my brother Swag, I've changed the word begotten to unique. This is not from the King James Version. The King James Version says begotten. I heard Brother Swag out on TV, or was it video? This morning, this morning. There he's speaking to a group as if it was his own church group, you know, giving some lessons on Babylon. 
I think it was on that or another one. He used the word begotten this morning. And in eight hours' time, he changed it to unique. <laughs> I'm asking, are you ashamed of the word begotten? Are you ashamed of it? That Jesus is the only begotten son? We believe the word of God teaches that there is one God. Not 2, 5, 10, 12, 15, one God. Manifest in three persons, three different personalities. We believe there is a heavenly Father. We believe there is God the Son. And we believe the Holy Ghost, as Mr. D. Dot mentioned, that came upon Mary, is also God. They are indivisible, meaning they agree perfectly. They are one in unity. They never disagree. They never have disagreed. You see, the idea of the Holy Ghost in Christendom is that he's one in a trinity. But the Christian says that the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Ghost is God. But they are not three gods, but one God. In his catechism, he continues that the Father is almighty, the Son is almighty, and the Holy Ghost is almighty. But they are not three almighties, but one almighty. It continues, your catechism. It says the Father is a person, the Son is a person, and the Holy Ghost is a person. That's what Brother Swagger says in his book. Person, person, person. But not three persons, but one person. I am asking what language are you speaking? I am asking, is that English? By God, it is gibberish, it's not English. You see, you say person, 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 but not three person, but one person. I say, Brother Swagat, you and your two other brothers, let's say you are three identical triplets, and we can't make the difference out between the three of you. They're all identical. We can't make out the difference. If one of you commit murder, can we hang the other? You say no. I'm asking, why not? So you tell me that he's a different person. I said, right. What makes him different? His personality. So the father, you know, imagination, the human mind, you can't help. When you use words, they conjure up mental pictures. When you say in the name of the father, you have a certain mental picture of that old father Christmas, Santa Claus, millions and millions of times bigger than man, but something like a man sitting on some planet with his feet dangling onto the earth as his footstool, the heaven as his canopy, the loving father in heaven. When you say God the son, I'm asking, are you thinking of a prize bull or a false one? No. You're thinking of a handsome young man, blonde hair, blue eyes, handsome features. Something like what you saw in the King of Kings, Jesus of Nazareth, you know, uh, on the day of triumph, where Jeffrey Hunter was acting. You know, handsome young man, blonde hair, blue eyes, handsome features, nice beard, not with a poly nose, with a crooked nose, that might make other pictures come into your mind. You know, Shakespeare made Shylock famous. It's a Shylock, Shylock, no. You see, so you're thinking of somebody like an Englishman, or a Nordic, or a German type, with a straight nose, the sun. And the Holy Ghost, something that came like a dove, when Jesus was baptized in the river Jordan by John the Baptist or something that came in flames of fire at Pentecost. I said, the picture is not...